Hello, today is October 2nd, day two of the Skeleton War. Tell us below how you're thriving in the Skeleton War. We all have skeletons inside of us. It's spooky. It's spooky season. Trying to escape at all times. I think today's high is supposed to be 95 in Kentucky. <laughs> Good old October. Yeah. Nice oh, fall weather. The fall weather. Yeah. You know what it is? Uh, the fall colors are really coming out in my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> Not the trees. Just in the lawn. Uh, Remember when we talked about the Google contractors? They were unhappy. They felt like they were not treated like real people, like the regular Google people, but they were doing the same work. And they had to live in these little nondescript buildings on the edge of town where ambulances wouldn't even come to. Well, they've decided they've had enough. Google contractors officially vote to unionize. It was like two-thirds. The contractors work at a company called HCL, which strongly encouraged its employees to vote against the union. So, yeah, the, the, the interesting thing here is that... Uh, the people that voted for and against the union thought that they did not have a comparable compensation or benefits package to regular Google employees, despite doing the same work. They have to, you know, Google employees have a blue badge. These guys have a red badge. Would you say it's a red badge of courage that they voted to unionize? They, uh... <laughs> it's the steel workers union, which... What parallel is there between a steel worker and a Google contractor? I don't know. Slinging code's feeling pretty blue collar these days, so I don't know. Yeah. Mm, I think the steel workers would disagree. <laughs> <laughs> they probably would, and rightfully so. Anyway. I know. Um, I come home exhausted after sitting at my desk all day. It's a different kind <laughs> of exhausted, I assure you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Galaxy Fold. Now, I thought when we covered this uh, last week, I thought this was out. It's not. It's coming out in October 4th or something, I think, right? But reviewers and influencers and the like have gotten theirs and the guy at TechCrunch has some bad news my galaxy fold display is damaged after a day it's a bright spot it's a bright spot right in the middle of the display right where the fold is with the if it had a different background other than the butterfly it'd be yeah. easier to tell that's right there yeah let's get uh, a close-up of it he said that uh Oh, Samsung no. picked it up <laughs> for analysis, and they're looking at it. They think that uh, it had excessive force during close, and that's what caused that. Because you push, Snap it shut. that's where the hinge is. Yeah. And he said the documentation did warn heavily against <laughs> pressing too hard. But let's face it, how is that not inevitable during the course of using your phone? Yeah. Planned so, obsolescence. <laughs> if you pre-ordered pre-order culture, bad bad idea. See if you can cancel, because it seems like they have not worked it out. No. It's still, it's not something that's uh, durable. The, the real question is just, yeah, like, what's the demand for this? Who, who wants this? TechCrunch editors. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh man, I got these out of order. Look what you've done. Now, you might think Galaxy Fold, it's, here's the demand. It's just, it's the, it's the very edge of phone technology. It's the coolest thing that's out there. It's the edgiest. And I want to get the coolest thing that's out there because I'm that person. I need it because it's just amazing and there's nothing better. And I'm going to destroy your world right now because there is something that's so incredible and so over the top and so much more fragile <laughs> that you're going to just eat your heart out for it. Xiaomi's Mi Mix Alpha is almost entirely made of screen. Except for one thin bar down the back of the phone. I guess that's the back. The entire thing is a screen. It's a wraparound screen. I think this thing sort of uh, defies the definition of front and back. I I don't really see the point of this either, but it does look amazing in every like demo I've seen of it on if, Twitter. If you told me that that thing wouldn't be completely destroyed in my pocket in a week <laughs> and that the battery lasted more than 20 minutes, I would definitely want that phone. Look at that. <laughs> That's fantastic. What? But why? Like, just... <laughs> it's just so cool. I mean... It looks amazing, but... Yeah. I think but how does it... I'd still rather have a keyboard. Oh, you ordered one with a keyboard, didn't you? Want oh, it's been delayed. Oh, and you, you had a crack in your other one. Yeah. Oh, I, you've replaced it, looks like. Yeah, it was only 30 bucks. So I figured, why not replace the screen? So this thing, um, they're not going to mass produce it. They are going to make some of them probably real expensive 
But it's going to be a limited run, and I'm sure they will be dead in a year. That's probably how they should have done the fold. It's like you can only do this if you're you're wearing you know an Armani suit as part of your regular like day to day business regimen, where you put it in the silk pocket whenever you're not using it. Or a purse. Or yeah. Nah, your Women's purse time needs rise smack up. <laughs> yeah, it's just there's no. There's no way that could work. There are some purses that have like the little uh, felt pocket. That's, yeah, they've been insert for that's pretty phones swanky. And a lot of them. Yeah. Microsoft, a company that's well known for being on the forefront of protecting your data, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's right. synonymous. We with can't keep a straight face. Protecting the consumer <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> telemetry and data harvesting. And good news, they've got a new team. Microsoft's new data dignity team could help users control their personal data. Could. Eh, could's probably the operative word here. You go on to read and it says, like, this team is going to try to come up with a way to help people control how their data is monetized, is what they mean to say. But then they reveal some of the details about how it works, and it just seems really dystopian. Like, one of the things they want to offer consumers is the ability to buy their own data. And it's like, wait. Buy what now? <laughs> what? Don't, it's don't like worry. A don't think about that too hard. It's like when the government grants you freedoms. Huh? <laughs> what? Huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Huh. It's like, wait, no. It's like, I'm going to buy, I'm going to, it's like emancipation. I'm going to buy my, you know, buy my freedom. I thought I already had one of those. <laughs> oh, the, uh, back in the old days and the time before memory, and recorded history, you could jailbreak your iPhone. You could actually control this very expensive piece of technology that you bought. You could do what you want with it. What a radical concept that was. We were living with the Stone Age. But now, thanks to one enterprising individual, we're back there. Alternative iOS App Store doesn't require a jailbreak. The Alt Store will even include its own Nintendo emulator. This is going to get shut down by Apple so hard. By next week, we'll have an update well, for the story. Legally, you mean, right? No, no, I don't think legally. I mean, the I think they're going to shut down the functionality that he's using because. But it's the it's the chip. No, no, that's uh oh yeah. Well, no, this one is the one that doesn't require a jailbreak. We've got a security story coming about the jailbreak. Spoilers. This is not that. They have actually in the newest chip. I think they've fixed this. This but is for these. You'll never be able to fix it. No, no, this is not that story. This story is about a dude that made a version like so apple has this oh you're right you're right you're right yeah, apple this has is this the, like uh, side loading thing oh it doesn't require a jailbreak oh, yeah, i'm yeah. getting these confused so this is just the uh you're basically using your uh developer mode mm -hmm. and tricking it and it's it, in that mode you got to resign every seven days but there's a feature of itunes that lets you do that over the network so as long as you're home once a week, it'll re-sign and update your applications transparently in the background so you can run homebrew applications, and it's totally fine, and they'll never expire or be weird. So in other words, there's going to be a lot more hoops to jump through to develop for iPhones pretty soon. Yeah, which yeah. is unfortunate. So, sad. Man, I'm really sad that we didn't put those two stories together. Was that in well, security? I mean, if you peel back the linoleum a little bit more on that story... Um, you know how like the new iOS 13 has all the privacy stuff that's like this application's using your location and this application's doing this and blah blah. A lot of the reason for having that walled garden goes away because people have better tools to see what an application is doing exactly. So I think that Apple making their device more transparent as to like what the applications do is less of an argument in favor of them having a walled garden. Like it is safe enough, it is safe enough that you can run you know, third-party applications in a sandbox without having to have Apple review them. And so that is hopefully in the Monopoly investigation that's going to come soon for Apple. That's going to be a thing, right? But that has nothing to do with the reason that they're doing that. No, it's, you mean like they're doing that because they want control and... And money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But so. there's side effects. There's always side effects. Yeah, the side effect is money. <laughs> and they like it. <laughs> Speaking of which, that brings us to our next story. <laughs> This one, uh, you know, I don't follow Donald Trump on Twitter, but I bet he took a little victory lap on this one. Did he? Did you notice I that? don't know. I didn't see. He might be a little busy this week. I don't follow week. him either. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is the whole, like, you know, bringing manufacturing back to America. Although there's, like, 
60 asterisks after this. There's 20 pages of footnotes. <laughs> Apple will manufacture its new Mac Pro in Texas. And by manufacture, we mean assemble. They're doing some of the aluminum work there, I guess, and then they're putting the parts together. They've got 10 of the 15 major components of the Mac Pro exempted from tariffs, so that will be a cost savings. Of course, this cost will not be passed on to you, the consumer. You can still be expected to pay six to $50,000 for the Apple Mac Pro configuration. Listen, $50,000 is a small price to pay. You know, more than my education. What, <laughs> what is the profit margin of your business if you can afford $50,000 computers for your employees? Well, or, it's all venture capital. There is no profit. <laughs> so it doesn't matter, right? I mean, I'm thinking, thinking like television pro- producers and ad agencies and crap like that. It's like, you know, if you can buy your people computers that expensive, how much money are I you making? I was thinking like Saudi princes. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the good news is most people don't spend sixty or $6,000 on a crappy old out-of-date computer so this uh, manufacturing plant won't have to work that hard yeah and i think that's the that's the big lie here is that it's like apple's bringing manufacturing back to america it's like this is an incredibly niche product with an incredibly narrow market and they're not going to make millions of these if they are just i weep for the future of humanity that'd be a big boost to the economy won't it (laughs) everybody buying a six thousand dollar uh computer all at once (laughs) Ah, remember that time that Chrome said, you know what, we're going to disable ad blockers for security. And the backlash was instant and savage. So much so that they said, okay, fine, we won't do it. Please, please, just leave us alone. We didn't mean it. But meanwhile, secretly, secret maybe because nobody cared, somebody else was doing the exact same thing. Apple neutered ad blockers in Safari, but unlike Chrome, the users didn't say a thing. And so you dive into this, and this article headline is actually technically perfectly accurate. Like, Apple has done a lot of stuff to, a lot of the same stuff that the Chrome engine team, like the WebKit team, was adopting for their thing, and no one cared. Or maybe it's because nobody uses Safari anymore. Well, nobody... Like Safari? The sophistication level of your average Safari user is so, <laughs> such a net low... That they probably don't even understand ad blockers. Yeah. I remember and when if, I installed an ad blocker on my mom's machine and she was blown away. Yeah, or if the ad blocker stopped working, maybe they just didn't even they didn't put it together. Didn't register. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's suddenly a lot more ads. What's happening? I'm so popular. Something's wrong with my phone. The internet <laughs> goes so much slower now. Can you look at it? I was thirteen, I added a lot of a lot of there's there are now like if you don't follow Apple and Safari's rules the ad telemetry is going to be blocked, but you're still probably downloading a, you know, a giant animated GIF or, or movie or whatever. We talk about the dystopian monitoring of the cameras and all, you know, your phone is monitoring in so many ways. There was, I don't think we, I put a story in here about it, but there was the whole like, uh, Oh no, it was in that uh, Apple story. I get what we're going to do later about, uh, the apps turn on Bluetooth. And it's like, wait a minute, (laughs) the app doesn't need Bluetooth. That should be through the phone speaker system while it's tracking. So everything is tracking us, but sometimes is it a good thing? It's hard when something like this happens. It's hard to say that it's bad, but it's bad, right? Well, this is like the slimmest use case. Uh, Spokane Man credits Apple Watch with saving his father's life after a bike crash. And apparently it was a pretty nasty bike crash. He hit his head. He was unconscious until he, he woke up in the, uh, the ambulance ride on the way back. So he crashed, and his, his Apple Watch was like, oh, you've taken a hard fall. Are you okay? And when he didn't respond, it dialed 911 and sent the, the dispatch his exact GPS location and also sent his son his, that message in his exact GPS location. And then when he made it to the hospital, it's like, oh, by the way, my location has changed. And it was like the hospital. So his son knew right where to find him. And, you know, from, from head injury to at the hospital, because the paramedics was under 30 minutes, which is genuinely very impressive. Well, yeah, plus he was out in the woods. Yeah. Yeah. Like outdoor biking. So that's a good story, but it is also terrifying. What if you get in a rumble with your street gang? And, As you know, I often do. You, get a, you land a really good hit, and it's enough G-force to set off that watch, and all of a sudden the cops are on the way. Well, that's why you well, go for the watch first. So It does ask you. It's like, I detected a hard fall. Are you okay? But you're busy grappling. You can't oh. answer your phone. Yeah. So, it's like you've never been in a street fight one day. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, I there hate I hate TechCrunch. I hate that X. It gets me every time. Amazon. They are rapidly developing surveillance to go everywhere. It's gonna be you're gonna wear it. It's gonna be in your house. It's gonna be on the street. It's gonna be on the police cameras that are hanging <laughs> off of telephone poles. It's gonna be in your glasses and in your jewelry. And how do you connect all that together? Well, they've got an answer for that too. <laughs> Amazon Sidewalk. Sidewalk is the new long-range wireless network for your stuff. It's low speed. It operates on the 900 megahertz spectrum. So if you have anything using that unlicensed 900 megahertz band, it's about to get a whole lot worse. Fair warning. But this is really designed for, like, they had a, an example of, like, a pet collar. There's, like, a dog. And it's yeah, like, cool, where'd the dog go? And it's like, okay, this thing, this thing can be found. But also tracking things and communicating with things over uh, relatively short distances. So it could go up to a mile, but really... Um, they just want better range than Wi-Fi, and they don't really care about throughput. Like, you don't need as much, uh, you know, like, data transfer as you get with Wi-Fi or even 4G or 5G. So the circuits here are very simple, they're inexpensive to implement, and they will be ubiquitous. Average time, Krista, for Rue to get that hung up on something and choke herself out. She's actually never done that with her collar, but But she would probably, like, it's so big that she would probably try to chew it. Well, and ruin it that way. I don't think way. she could get her mouth down there, but it could definitely get caught on something. She's got a, a bandana on right now, and she's been trying to get it off, but she can't. <laughs> it bandana. says, I'm ready to cuddle on Did the Did she join the Crips? No, she. Uh, we took her to get groomed yesterday. If you want to see that, check out Twist- Chris's Twitter. I haven't posted a picture of it, but I will after this. Oh, what a terrible owner. From their point of view, it will have been in the past. That's true. Wow. Yes. I've already done that. <laughs> Should have put this story right after the other one, but well, we're still in the Amazon block. Yeah, it counts. We're Foreshadowing. Fine. And uh, like we say, you're going to be wearing Alexa soon. And I'm not. I don't mean Alexa is a fashion designer, and you're wearing. No, no, no. <laughs> Alexa, the assistant. You will be wearing her. Amazon to sell limited edition Alexa equipped glasses and ring. I weep for the future of humanity. Like I don't. Do people find this genuinely useful? Why Alexa, is this useful? Alexa, who's the fairest of them all? <laughs> I mean, really? Like, why? <laughs> why is it? Like, I'm... Uh, why? What do you think the battery life is on that thing? Depends on how much you talk. Mm. Well, it's, but it's always listening. It right? has to listen all the time. Yeah, they probably got that. That's probably on, like, a grain of rice-sized, uh, you know, piece of silicon at this point. So that probably works for, you know, days or years. But more importantly... It's picking up if you're listening to a radio station or if you're near a TV yeah. or if you're in a supermarket and it's playing their sound system. It's like, oh, I know where you are. Literally building a map of your entire life. Yep. You're at Kroger and your heart rate's increased. <laughs> Turns out that this data will be used to replace you with an algorithm. Did you see a wacky inflatable tooth man costume while you were at the grocery? <laughs> you want me to order that? It would be funny if, like, as a result of us talking about that or us talking about that on the news for other people, people start to see ads for that. It is a good costume, but I bet, I don't know, they might. Most of our users do don't think, use ads, but. Do you think uh, the wacky and inflatable tube people have bought a lot of online ads? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what would really talk me into uh, buying the wacky inflatable tube band costume is if Samuel L. Jackson tries to talk me into it. This is, it's become such a meme that now I'm just I'm kind of angry at it, <laughs> but he's finding a way to profit off. You of can't. It. Hey, I wonder what they paid him for this, right? Uh, probably a lot. <laughs> oh, oh! It turns out Amazon's Alexa will soon add the Samuel L. Jackson voice, according to this article from Mashable. Yeah, so they didn't have him record a bunch of lines. They literally modeled his voice so that it can respond any which way from now until the end of time as Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson is now literally immortal and will live on forever in the Amazon cloud. In like 50 years, people are like, who was that? You're telling me that guy used to be an actor? (laughs) Or or they'll like watch some classic movie and like, that's Alexa. Yeah. (laughs) That's what Alexa said. uh, You can get it with and without expletives. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I think we've, we've really got to do, like, as long as Dick Van Dyke is still alive and some of those guys, we need to get them to model that with those guys while they're still alive. Do we, though? What's the, what's the intersection of people who use that suite of products and who also would know that voice? Dick Van Dyke is a brilliant, brilliant man. You know what? They've never found anything me too about Dick Van Dyke, have they? Mm-mm. I'm telling you, he's like the original 
You know, there's nothing. He's never done anything wrong, ever. Well, he did uh, that. We'll uh, see. <laughs> he did, did that, a few things. He did that British accent in, uh, <laughs> what was the one movie? Oh, uh, no, there, there has been some controversy in his life, but it's basically fine. I mean, he was just bad at it. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Tesla. Speaking a, of things that are bad at things. Uh, Tesla had a big update, and uh, it wasn't all that exciting. Some of the smaller things they announced, and I like how they did a press release for this. It was like, you can play Cuphead in your Tesla, and Good. now you can, you can watch Netflix while you're not driving your car. <laughs> and uh, But the big one is, of course, summon mode. Tesla just released a big software update that allows its cars to drive themselves in parking lots. So you come out of the mall, you hit the button, and your Tesla will pick you up. Problem is, there are videos on the internet that have surfaced of people using the new summon mode, and the Teslas aren't doing a great job about checking for oncoming traffic in the uh, traffic lanes in the parking lots. Uh. Also, this is going to be a nightmare because there's going to be a big line of Teslas in the fire lane, and they're just going to be blocking everything. <laughs> yeah. I hate people that park in the fire lane. I do too, as someone who used to have to push carts, because... The fire lane, also, we had to go across with the carts to get them up into the corrals. There's no excuse. I don't care if you're old and you need to be let out of the car. Don't do it in the fire lane. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not for you. It's for fires. <laughs> Something's making noise. I don't hear it. <clears throat> of course you don't. Oh, I can, I can definitely see the desktop audio VU meter just going nuts. Your senses are dull, Krista. We've confirmed that. No, I mean, I can't see. I can hear just fine. <laughs> it's from the devil's lettuce. <laughs> Remember when we used to talk about Facebook and their facial recognition and tagging, and that was bad. People didn't like it, and they sued them. Well, it turns out they're not the only people who've done such a thing. Vimeo sued for storing face prints of people without their say-so. They've been sued. The article goes on to describe that the, the lawsuit is like, why are you doing this? How long do you keep it? For what purpose is it? They haven't done, they haven't said any of that. They know that they're doing it because videos can get tagged if they contain people and Vimeo knows who, knows who they are. So this is the same people that filed a lawsuit against uh, uh, Facebook? No, nah, I think it's the same people, but it's Illinois. Oh, okay. Which is the one state that has facial recognition laws. Or one of the first. I think some other ones have adopted it. And this is a little bit more complicated, too. It's not... So you're thinking, wait a minute. Why does Vimeo have my face information? Well, they had some other software. I can't remember what the name of it was. That they acquired. And uh, that software has your facial... Magisto. I don't know what Magisto does. It's a video creation platform. So somehow through that, it gets your information and matches your face. Well, Vimeo took that in and now I guess is using it on Vimeo. So if it knew those people, it starts using it. Anyway, whatever they're doing, it's illegal in Illinois. So Neat. It's time for a class action. It's time it's to mute that tab. This tab that's making. Oh. Crim 2. Wait. Is this the same story that we've already done about? No, no, no. See, like these. Yeah, news, yeah. It was oh, making, they. Oh, okay. So it we've done this noise. one already. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. These new sites, once you leave a tab open for so long, they just autoplay to, yeah. to drive up their hits. They start like loading other content in. So advertisers are like, "Oh yeah, your site's really popular." It's lies. A lot of you might not know that broadcast television, the word being broad there, that's the word that tips it off, is actually free. <laughs> you don't have to pay for it. Now, if you have DirecTV or you know a cable package, you are paying a little bit for it because a lot of those places made the argument, hey, you're making money, cable companies and satellite companies, off of our content, so you need to pay us to rebroadcast it. But if you just use an antenna, it's totally free. It has to be. It's part of their licensing. So a certain enterprising individual said, well, if it's free over a antenna over the airwaves why not free over the internet right and he started a company and guess how they reacted lowcast a free streaming service sues abc cbs nbc and fox i don't know how this is going to turn out because this so far is the same story as arrow the only difference is that lowcast is a non-profit and arrow was for profit but it should be not illegal for someone to rent a box that has an antenna 
and then receive signals from that antenna. If it's like rebroadcast over the internet, that should be okay. But I think <coughs> the nonprofit is the difference. Like that's the because things like Directv do have to pay them rebroadcast fees, which is new. Like when cable, the cable TV industry was nascent, nascent. I don't know. I always say it wrong. Like a long time it's a word ago. Word you read and never have to say out loud. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, a long time ago when it was, you know, like coast to coast and it was the big antenna repeater things. And then there were just people that lived out in BFE that just couldn't get a good signal for whatever reason. The cable companies argued successfully that they shouldn't have to pay anything to the broadcasters. And that's no longer true. They got the law passed that way. But there is still a loophole for nonprofits. It Well, but it's not defined. Yeah. So it's understood that, yes, you can do this with an antenna, but they're saying that that does not include broadcasting over the internet yeah so effectively there would be no way to do that in other words like it's like oh this is a thing you can do except there's no way to actually do it in reality that's the disingenuous lie so we'll see turns out not a lot of people use that but he's suing that's probably not a bad deal if it's a non-profit he can pay himself a salary from that yeah and probably make a nice little living well, Arrow was a, was quite a profitable organization. So imagine a non-profit version of Arrow. It would take over the universe. Arrow was a very popular company with a lot of subscribers. Uh, so let's see. Nintendo, Microsoft, and the latest being Apple have all released subscription gaming services. The world is being flushed toward subscription gaming. I don't know how to feel about it. But it's where we're going, and now we have yet another company that's doing the same thing. Google Play Pass Bundles. 350 Android games and apps for $5 a month. No ads, no in-app purchases, and a introductory $1.99 price. I'm still not tempted to do this. No, I don't, I don't play enough mobile games to make that worth it. Like That's 350 apps. 325 of them are Candy Crush clones. <laughs> Chris, you use the iPad a lot. Does does the five dollar a month Apple thing tempt you in any way? No. But that one's just games. This one's games and apps, which is interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. If I really want an app, like on the iPad, I'll. I'll I'm one of those people I have to read like two hundred reviews of it and then I purchase it. Well, I think about like the the length of time that I've had an Android phone. If I had been paying five dollars a month the number of applications that I can afford, and that is a staggeringly large number of applications. Yeah. Well, mm. like, I don't know. I just, I don't download new apps very often. Like, Plus the security implications of apps yeah. are just terrible. And I don't believe they're going to vet them on the Google Play Store. I no. mean, you guys know how addicted to Twitter I am, and I will not install the Twitter app. Yeah. So. And Twitter's actually taken steps to neuter all of the other privacy-respecting apps that let you have a more... Uh, coherent interface than the web interface for Twitter, so I just suffer now. It's a terrible cross that you, I bear. You have to start <laughs> start using Twitter for desktop soon. Or just not use Twitter on my phone. <laughs> New York Stock Exchange. They have launched something that could not have come at a worse time. <laughs> <laughs> They've launched the long awaited Bitcoin futures. I don't there's there's a lot of words here. There's not a lot of article. I don't know what more to tell you. Is there, you know, it's, they don't even have a, a photo of a fake Bitcoin in here. How am I supposed to know <laughs> wow. what the article's about? Wall Street Journal, just hang it up. Surely it's not a coincidence that they launched this and then Bitcoin immediately went to eight grand. <laughs> so there is one big difference. Uh, and I can't remember which is which and we're paywalled, so I can't scroll down to. <laughs> but the Chicago Mercantile Exchange also has a Bitcoin future. It's not the same. One of them is settled in Bitcoins, actual delivery, and one of them is settled in cash. Oh. Now, that is huge. And it, if this is the cash settled one, which I think it is, it could actually explain the, the drop in price. Because mm. what you can do, if you had an unlimited amount of money, Federal Reserve, <laughs> and you wanted to destroy the price of a commodity in a cash settled futures exchange you could sell futures like crazy lose money and settle in cash because you don't actually have to buy the bitcoin to deliver to the counterparty mm. that might be why conspiracy hats on it's, winkle vi you've been challenged you need to rise to the challenge and offset the thing because they own like almost all the bitcoin 
not really, but kind of a lot. Moving on to social media, we learned about Instagram, and amazingly, they figured out that when you uh, monetize human interaction in the form of likes, it creates a terrible, terrible dystopian future. And so they said, maybe we'll get rid of that, and some other people are jumping on that bandwagon. Facebook will test hiding likes on its own site. This is in Australia. So if you're upside down right now, check your Facebook. So uh no more likes. Where is the and I don't even know enough about Facebook's interface. It's usually to... underneath the photo of the thing they shared. It'll show you how many likes they've got. Well, isn't this a before and after? I th- I assume so, but it looks like there's likes in both of them. Well, you can still like. So the the function is still there. And you as the poster can still see the like count. It's other people looking at it who can't. Who can't. Yeah. I wonder if that increases or decreases engagement. I wonder if somebody's working on a Facebook app to scrape that like feature and print it somewhere on the page. (laughs) I saw a Google, this is kind of related, it's a little bit of a ramble, but uh, I saw a Google product opinions survey and uh, one of the questions was like, I missed my regular bedtime because of watching YouTube videos and like strongly agree, strongly disagree. And then the next question was like, I've, you know, had trouble with like my homework or other or work or school or something because of my YouTube consumption habit. And it's like, whoa, is, is Google being a little introspective here? Is the AI like, hmm, maybe I've, maybe I've become too good at making people do things. Maybe I should scale back. It just seemed like there was a little bit of self-reflection in those survey questions. Uh, this story is out of order. It's in the Facebook block, but I'm not going to bother to rearrange it. No. Just pretend that we're still in the Facebook block, but having a small commercial break. <laughs> the YouTube CEO, Susan, last name that I never can pronounce. You got uh, pretty close before, I think, when you tried to say it. Wojcicki? Wojcicki. Wojcicki. I just want to listen to him suffer. <laughs> Who I don't cares? Know how to pronounce it either. Mad lad. YouTube lady says <laughs> that, uh, you know, we've got the, they, they released their terms of service. They're trying to be more transparent. And tell us why they're demonetizing all our videos and not sharing them. And a lot of people immediately pointed out, they were like, hey, here's uh, 20 videos that violate exactly what you're talking about. And they're all from, you know, Nancy Pelosi and Donald Trump. (laughs) And so she has made an official statement about that. Uh, Politicians can break our own content rules, she says. And the article goes on to explain in a lot more words that they're like, well, sometimes it's very important that they get their message out to their constituents and blah, blah, blah. It's newsworthy, which means it's clickworthy, which means YouTube gets more traffic. It doesn't, it really, like, the lie of YouTube is that it is some sort of egalitarian place. Like, if you make good content and you do something interesting, that it will be shared and it will be good on its own merit. If you're a politician, you can make absolute swill and drivel, and the platform will happily push that out, is basically what they've admitted to, which is... What people have suspected all along, but they have not come right out and said. Don't forget to like this video, speaking of swill. (laughs) (laughs) Don't forget to waste your like. Uh, Remember that time that uh, Facebook bought that popular company and ruined it? No, not that time. No, not that time. The other time. No, no, not that one that you're thinking of. The one before that. No, no, the third one after the other time. What about the one where they literally forced out the inventor of the technology (laughs) into another company? It's like that, except that part hasn't happened yet. But they've done it again. Facebook buys a startup building a neural monitoring armband. So if you haven't seen the videos of this, you totally should. This is like Control Labs or Control Media or, yeah, Control Labs. Yikes. A New York-based startup. Like, you just wear this. Like, you can wear it on your wrist, and it'll monitor your arm movements. But, um, like, one of their demos, it almost seems like you have uh, uh, telekinesis because, like, you can imagine moving your hand to, like, reach out for a block or whatever, and it knows. Like, it, it learns very, very quickly. So Facebook is thinking this plus VR is going to be the interface of the future. Hmm. Not looking forward to that future. The uh, the company had raised sixty seven million in venture capital to get as far as they did. They don't they didn't tell us exactly what they paid for it, but a lot of the market observers estimated between five hundred million and a billion. Whew. So somebody made a couple of cents there. <laughs> That's uh... congratulations, Control Labs guy. <laughs> or girl. Could be girl. 
I don't know. It's not. <laughs> Snap. Snap is one of those companies that <laughs> Facebook decided they needed to own, right? And now it's going to be snapped by Facebook. So they've actually gone as far as to inject their disgusting brand onto it. And it turned out that uh, while this was going on, Snap recognized what was happening and recorded it. <laughs> Snap's Project Voldemort dossier detailed Facebook's copycat moves. Krista, do you have any idea why they named it that? I, yeah, I have not been able to figure out. Like when we first were talking about this story earlier, I was like, Project Voldemort? Well, in Gadgets, well, isn't he a villain? In Gadgets, He's a villain, but I mean, that could have been any. Like, I don't know why they picked Voldemort and the, not any other Their villain. subheading says it's the social network that must not be named, and it's like, that just made me more confused. Well, that's that's a nickname for Voldemort, but like, is that the only connection? Is that it's like the social network not to be named? I don't... So, I, I guess basically, Snap was having meetings with Facebook executives, and it was literally like, this is the, the amount of money that we're willing to give you because that's the amount of money it would cost us to add your features to our platform. So take it or leave it. And if you don't take it, we are just going to steal the features. We're straight up just doing it. And you can't stop us. And that's what they kept track of. So. That seems a little anti-competitive. Like that seems like FTC, like the FTC would look at that and be like, what are you doing? Uh, they also went so far as to say that uh, they caught instances of Facebook telling people that use Facebook plat- the Facebook platform like influencers don't use snap links or we're going to take away your verified status. Which, if true and provable, is going to be an antitrust violation. I think that was uh, Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Another acquisition. <laughs> so, yeah. It's starting to look like Zuckerberg's not... Uh... Zuckerboned. <laughs> Zuckerboned. Facebook, uh, we all know that there was the whole election meddling thing and there's the whole buying of ads and oh it's just it's on and on and on but we also know that in some of the less uh democratic parts of the world that the powers that be use facebook very heavily and someone decided to look at it and say uh when it comes to fake news who is the worst you know uh, mirror mirror (laughs) and uh guess who's number one it's not going to surprise you no. Facebook is the most popular social network for governments spreading fake news and propaganda. So, yeah, I mean, if you're, you know, despotic or just a bad person running for a mayoral race in like a third-rate U.S. city, you look at something like Facebook and it's like, wow, you mean that I've got a tool here where I can target the people in my area and just make up some random thing and, you know, make up some random thing about my opponent and, you know, Watch anonymously... Watch it spread like wildfire yeah, on the I, internet? It's like I can go to Walmart and get a gift card, credit card, and sign up for a thing and just run that ad. And This is the most amazing thing ever. It's going to drive people into a frenzy. They're going to be so bent out of shape, they're not going to be thinking straight. Did you know that here in the good old U.S. of A., the land of the free, we have p- protection in law against propaganda from our government until 2012. <laughs> That's fantastic uh, news for past us. <laughs> Can we put that back? How do we put that back? Can we run on, on a platform of putting that back? It's like, I just want to put that back. Nothing else. There's no other <laughs> platform. We'll, just we'll that. start there, but good Lord. So we talk about Facebook and their uh, magic VR world and their <laughs> brain scanning technology. And uh, you might think that's going to be an amazing future, but when you look at what the actual plan is for that VR world, it looks a little underwhelming. <gasps> Facebook to create a VR world called Horizon. This does not look in the least bit appealing. BBC has some screenshots of this. I, I don't know. I think I, it was a slow news day at the BBC, to be honest. I wonder if, like, there, mm-hmm. the art team for this originally had, like, some really amazing ideas, but it became one of those things. It's like, well, it needs to appeal to this demographic and this demographic and this demographic until it eventually appeals to no one. This is kind of a common art style. I think this kind of looks like the, the Wii Little. Nintendo. I hate it. I hate this <laughs> art style. It's terrible. I mean, Second Life is still popular, and it's like, we want a VR Second Life. Okay. I mean, I, I get that. I understand that, but... The world just doesn't look particularly interesting. I mean, like, just from these screenshots. Like, it doesn't look compelling. So there's going to be, like, just hanging out with your avatar, interacting with people, and then there's the games version, which I guess is what these airplanes are doing up here. 
Yeah. Those are things I can do in real life. Why would I VR that? You can have airplane dogfights in real life? I can play it on a video game. Or I can take a flight on a plane. But they don't let you shoot the guns. They don't. <laughs> this one, uh, getting away from Facebook finally. Uh, this one, so we all talked about this. And we agreed that we want to see how many hashtags this woman used. Because this makes no sense. Twitter suspends Baltimore delegate for excessive use of hashtags while tweeting about transit and climate. Uh, what is excessive? I didn't. I totally didn't get this one. I, you would think Baltimore Sun that you'd like they copied a tweet, but this is the tweet when she came back, which is that's a kind of a cool little image right there. Yeah. <laughs> and but not the tweets that were supposedly offensive. Because the the bot automatically removed those. I don't know. What, what, like, what is, is like 20 hashtags too much or ni- is 19 okay? Like, what's the number? Uh, now, it, they changed it so it doesn't count toward the character limit anymore if you hashtag, right? Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's, I don't think so. Maybe they're thinking it's just like too much Spain? area taken yeah. up. Mm. She did cheekily give the uh, free at last hashtag, uh. <laughs> which maybe downplays the whole MLK thing a little bit. (laughs) We have a new treaty here in the U.S. Are you guys excited about it? (laughs) It's with the U.K. and it has to do with crime and uh, trading information about criminals and extradition and stuff like that. And that, of course, means dealing with encryption. Facebook and WhatsApp will have to share messages with the U.K. police. And we read this, and the more we read this, the more questions we had. Like, does this mean if the UK police think you're suspect of something, that it's a sovereign US citizen will have to give this up? Or is it is this a UK citizen visiting the US? And does this mean Facebook and WhatsApp are going to have to change their platform so that the encryption can be decrypted in the first place? Because that would also be big news. I don't think that they've made those decisions, but the answer is yes. <laughs> So this is going to do away, like you're not going to be able to have encryption as part of any kind of hosted service anymore at all. That seems... Oh no, says law enforcement. Almost inevitable. And finally, (laughs) this was, uh, there was a feel-good story, and it was all over the place. And then one intrepid reporter said to himself, I want to dig further. (laughs) <laughs> and he did, and he found something very unpleasant. But perhaps he was digging from within a glass house. <laughs> Reporter who exposed racist tweets no longer at the paper after readers revealed his offensive tweets. This headline does nothing to explain the story. Like it I, does, pretty convoluted. Yeah. I had never heard of this. Like how this like, was we, all over the place. I'm well, surprised you missed it. Well, let's start at the beginning with uh, Mr. Carson here. Well, it's, I'm looking at a Bush Light can. So this was a, a sporting event, and he held up a sign or something. And his sign said, need more Bush Light, and he had a Venmo account name on it. So, I mean, nobody would just send a random stranger money through the internet because they saw him on TV, right? Well, he was on the heart cam or whatever. Wrong. <laughs> he got a truckload of money. And so he claims he went out and bought one case of Bush Light, and I mean, he was really... You know, appealing to the bush light people here. And uh, then... He could have been a plant. You know, you got to give him credit. He didn't keep that money, which he easily could have. It was legally his. He decided, let's give it to a children's hospital. And so he did. And then a reporter dug into his tweets going back to when he was a teenager? 16 or 18. I think it's 16. Well, yeah, I want to say it was 16. But... And he, he apparently said something offensive when he was 16. He's 24 now. Uh, we don't know exactly what he said. I believe it might have been an N-bomb, the way they yeah. they shape it here. So I guess Bush pulled their deal where they were going to make a can. Oh, no, him. he wasn't 18. He was 18 and in high school when he said that. Yeah. I would never have said the word out loud at that point in my life as I never had. That's a lie. That's, yeah, probably a lie. But the point is, is that it was a long time ago. Yeah, well, six years. Uh, and then the reporter was fired because he had said something similar in his past. Well, people were outraged. Because this guy really was doing kind of a selfless thing. And children's hospitals, listen, I'm no fan of children, but I don't, I'm not against children's hospitals. <laughs> yeah. I think 
think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody against the children's hospital. <laughs> At least anybody that would admit it. Yeah. And so people were rightfully so kind of uh, indignant that it's like, why are you going after this man? Look what he's doing. <laughs> and he did the hospital thing without it, like any like the this racial thing came out later. It's like, eh, I'll just give the money away. It's yeah. Fine. Yeah, he wasn't trying to make up for anything. So, but then those people doing their own reporting dug into the Twitter past of the reporter. <laughs> And I don't even know what his thing was. I don't think it was racial, but it was something offensive. So, so then, yeah, there's always a bigger fish. The internet wins again. <laughs> there's always a more racist fish. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were I think that might be the title of this week's episode. <laughs> we were talking about, uh, you know, like, do any of us have anything in our Twitter? And I realized I actually do think I have something in my Twitter. But it was done not knowing what the term meant. Oh, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I was laughing because I saw someone with the username, and this may be offensive to some viewers, Turd Burglar <laughs> in Overwatch. And I laughed about it, and I tweeted, I was like, what a silly name. And I didn't know what that meant either until we were discussing it for the news. I, I, the person who responded to me on Twitter was like, oh, that's a, that's a slur in, in the UK for a gay man. <laughs> and I was like, what? That makes sense, It I makes guess. sense when you think about it. But I was just thinking someone was stealing poop, which was funny to me and hence why i tweeted it and ryan's question was like how would that happen and it's like you steal it out of the toilet and yeah like, no, that's, that's like the absurdity of is what's funny he also he, ryan you knew what it was yes i didn't know what it was and here's a pro tip a pro twitter tip krista don't do any tweeting when you take that tour of the fudge packing factory uh, <laughs> i have heard that term i had never heard the other though so that's enough of that well, we have a little bit more about this story. So this guy was going to get his face on the can. Iowa legend, because of the nice thing that he did. Oh. And he was going to get free beer forever for the rest of his life. Not anymore. Oh. So boo. now Bush is going to take the money that they were going to put toward those two things and give it to the children's hospital. That's but good. that's unfortunate for this guy. Unfortunate for the designer who had to spend the time on the mock-ups. <laughs> and then it's like, well, shit. <laughs> and they, they even produced a video. Real man of genius. Is that the right brand? No, that's not the right brand. All right, that's all we got. That's enough. That's we'll it. see you Friday. See you guys. Mm-hmm.